and run. Hurry, Bill. <laughs> Solid work. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Good day, Gubby. Good day, sir. So, uh, yeah, we're sans Livy today. Yeah. So we're yeah, we're one def- camera angle, no editing. It's gonna be rough. Dude. One shot. We're doing yeah. it live. And plus, there's no one to kind of like reel us, reel us in a little yeah. bit. So that's gonna maybe a problem. It's gonna be a three-hour podcast. No. <laughs> Basically, what's gonna come? Down. So I know we have some questions. Yeah. A um, couple things I want to kind of touch on before we start. Okay. Um, I haven't told you about any of them. You have. I'm gonna put you on blast a little bit. Um, I know we're coming up next week for a competition, uh, the Revolution, kind of the biggest one in the Northwest. Good brackets and all belts. I think there's like 2,500 adult competitors. Literally 2,500. Yeah, so yeah. it's a really well run um, competition. And um, I know you're going into it, uh, middleweight. What are you doing, master? Three, four. Three, four. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you're not going into it, I probably should put it, but I mean, physically in an optimal yeah. state. I'll just put it that way without yeah. giving away any. What is that? And I, I think a lot of people may get something out of the week before and what you're thinking and you know how you're dealing with if you feel like, hey, I'm not going in there 100%. Yeah. Do you want to comment on any of that or do you want to just pass? So, yeah, you know, I uh, there's been, it, it probably is, I guess, kind of good to talk about mm-hmm. is, do you still stay in? Yeah. Right. Right. That's kind of where I was going to see what, you know, if you want to talk about that. Yeah. A bit. I mean, that's, that's interesting. So, whether, you know, outside life stuff, whether that's work, family, throwing injury, like uh, semi injury kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Um, especially multiple that just kind of seem to yeah. can't catch a break. Usually that's what happens. Yeah. And difference between injury and being hurt. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Um, this isn't stuff that has, it's, it's not, let's say like a, a knee tear where you're like, you are not even drilling, like you're not mm-hmm. on the mat type mm-hmm. thing. Um, but it, it's definitely hindered sparring and stuff like you're that. You're altering how you're having to, to, yeah roll yeah yeah how how you have to roll Mm -hmm. you're gonna be kind of protective Mm -hmm. about certain whether it's a limb or something like that or maybe Mm -hmm. it's your back and you can't you gotta avoid getting like uh, like stacked or inverting Mm -hmm. or something like that and if that's a part of your game that could be really tough right um so a couple things that i'm dealing with it does affect my game especially my stand-up game because i was hoping to kind of showcase you know some of the work I've been Love doing. Love your white belt judo. Yes, yeah. exactly. No, <laughs> literally. No, I know. Um, but it's better uh, than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that that probably you know might might not happen. Um, might not be able to. Um, at least the stuff that I, I've really kind of honed in. I might have to be doing. Oh, some, as far as your stand up. Yeah, some secondary okay. stuff. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the reason I'm still, I decided to still compete mm-hmm. is. It, it kind of comes down to the th- stuff that I, I tell myself when the butterflies kick in mm-hmm. is I'm not afraid to make a mistake and I'm not afraid to lose. If I'm not afraid to make a mistake and I'm not afraid to lose, I can do nothing but get better if I do it. Mm-hmm. Now, there's going to be ego in play if I, I lose or get submitted because, unfortunately, I hate losing more than I like winning. So um, <laughs> it's losing even though, like, I can put on a brave face like Michael mm-hmm. Scott. Mm-hmm. I uh, it, it'll probably eat me up for the next three months or so. So <laughs> damn, dude! Uh, um, I'll tranquilize you or something. Yeah, what we'll do. I still you. think about Master Worlds. I know. So. <laughs> we need to. We probably need to do some therapy for uh, you or something. Uh, I mean, Olivia will definitely jump on that boat. Yeah, I'll be like, yeah, I've been telling him for about ten years. Mm-hmm, that's funny. So, I, but I feel like I have to take the medicine that I give, mm-hmm. and I tell our students and our teammates that competition, literally whether you ragdoll someone and you beat that booty and you did, I mean, a f- great match and you just submitted the person you passed her, you did all this good stuff or it happens to you. Mm-hmm. The, the tree goes to the same point mm-hmm. and that's on Monday. You're going to work on what you need to do better, whether you lose a tight one or you get destroyed or you win a tight one or you destroy someone. 
no matter what, you're going to be, you're just finding out what you need to do better. I, become a better martial artist. I love what you're saying. I just am a little dubious. Sure. What does that mean? With you. What does that mean, though, dubious? I mean, and because I know how you are. Yes. I just hate to see you beat yourself up about things. And yeah. so I'm dubious that you'll take your own advice to heart. Especially post. I know. Yeah. That's, and I'm not saying I would. Right, right. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's Olivia's concern. Yep. Is that I... I'll really like kind of beat myself up and stuff like that. Because, and, yeah. But, but on the other hand, you don't want to be apathetic about it either. Like I just yeah. don't give a hell about it. Right. Whatever. I'm just going to go and compete. You know, right. You got, there's some skin in the game for sure, but. And being a competitive minded person. Yes. Like will get us going in the mm-hmm, moment for mm-hmm, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying, and this is like a big experiment for me. This prep mm-hmm. is exploring positive Mm self-talk and as we've talked about Mm -hmm. and i've had actually a couple people come up to me uh, Mm -hmm. at our gym and at other gyms say they listen and like appreciate that we talk about how our default voice in our head is um david goggins talking about how much of a pussy we are yeah it's your internal a-hole yes yeah for sure and it's not very gentle with the rubber glove no. no. And no, that's, that's our cool. default. That's right. I think there's a place for it, for mm-hmm. sure. But I don't, I'm, I've am i started to believe as I've gotten older that it's not, it shouldn't be the only voice. Mm-hmm. Especially for lead up to some sort of, whether it's job promotion or trying to get a, a job, a manager, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um some sort of competitive endeavor, hobby or not, that you need to have confidence going in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it can be difficult to have that confidence with that one voice that just talks trash to you about do better, you, you wimp, or mm-hmm. however you want to say it. You kind of need the ego side. This is, I'm a bad mom. Yeah, no, right. Which wallet's yours? Yeah, as long as you don't become delusional with it. Right. Completely. And, and we kind of talked about it, I guess, on the last episode with yeah, Carson. Yeah, and, for sure. The JT thing. Yeah. Having yeah. an understanding and a realistic perspective, mm-hmm. but also don't kill yourself before you even get there. In mm-hmm. this tournament, I'm really, really trying to do that in the lead up. And trust me, guys, I it feels so woo woo y. Like essential oils rubbing on my bald spot. There's nothing wrong with essential oils, my friend. I'm sure they have a <laughs> lot of application, but some people get a little extreme with them. They're not going to grow hair. Watch your mouth. No, I'm just no. That, I'm I'm helping you with that. Okay. I'm just saying that in that analogy, I got some new ones. If you look up here, look at the front, like right here. Okay, brother. First of all, my eyes are bad, and there ain't any new follicles that I can see. And I'm going back to my Louisiana. Boys, don't look at the I can't see no follicles, son. Get your eyes off my follicles, (laughs) old dirty man. I know. So, this now it's kind of unfortunate that the first time I'm really trying to practice this Mm -hmm. is in a time where I wasn't able to, um, oh, like, uh, what's the lead up? Um, prepare, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe what I would say is sufficiently. Mm -hmm. Like, usually I go into a tournament and I'm very zeroed in. Mm-hmm. I always talk about shrink jujitsu down. Yeah. Where I'm like, okay, I'm going to do lapel guard, like a specific kind of lapel guard, reverse de la worm. And then I'm going to go into this or spider reverse de la heva or whatever it is, right? Like I'm, I'm going into tournaments and I try to like be like, this is the position I'm going to work. And this one, I'm kind of like, I'm just going to let my jujitsu breathe. Mm-hmm. And I just hope to display good jujitsu. You're going to kind of almost like we're going down a rapids. We're going to take any, every obstacle as it comes. Yeah. Type of thing you instead of. Water, my friend. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I thought I'd bring that in there. It's the water in the deep. Well, up. let me ask you. You don't have to answer this, although I'm putting you on the spot, so you probably will feel like a biatch if you don't. I am gay. <laughs> but um, being an instructor at our academy, one of our black belts, 
do you also feel, not the pressure of the competition itself, but how you handle, let's say that you do have some uh, disappointing Mm -hmm. perform performance. Mm -hmm. It's also important for the students to see how our black belts handle that, Mm -hmm. especially if we're going to give them advice. Yeah. Right. You can't be like giving really good advice and being like, Uh, you know what I'm saying? The opposite. Right. And so to me, that would be a little extra like, man, okay, I got to get my shit. I got to have it together. a little bit. I do definitely feel a lot of pressure in that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, that's, it's kind of, I, that pressure, I feel like can help me, um, stay in my lane and what i mean is for example when i win Mm -hmm. my matches i'm there's sometimes i want to like like be like super rip the gear open (laughs) beat your chest yeah yeah yeah. if i wasn't so self-conscious about looking like a fatty i'd probably do it (laughs) um, you're not a fatty come on dude (laughs) the uh but yes i i so when I win, mm-hmm. I try to be very stoic. Mm-hmm. I try to act like I've been there before, and I try to act like I kind of expected it, and it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Rather than the over-the-top celebration, mm-hmm. because I think, one, it's healthier to, to do that. Um, two, I think it's more professional. Yeah. I think it's more controlled. I would agree. It's more disciplined. Mm-hmm. And now we have... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to put him on blast, but some people know who he is. But we have a white belt that's very, very passionate. And when he's won a couple matches, <laughs> he has done the the primal scream. He almost got DQ'd after he won. I thought he was a blue belt now. No. Oh, we're thinking of another, another yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, Never mind. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> speaks Russian, doesn't look like Oh, f- fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, he... So his first match, he, he, he did his, his celebration. Mm-hmm. And Andrew and I both said, hey, let's tone that down. Mm-hmm. So he got reprimanded by mom and dad. Oh. And then his second one, but we weren't very, like, you know, too direct. Mm. Second one, he had a tough match, wins by submission. Just primal scream again. Like Predator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I'm glad you went back from the mic on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that would have been bad. <laughs> um, and uh, the the ref comes over and starts like tearing him up a little bit. Yeah, like you're do that again. You're done. Sportsmanship. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that's when pull him aside. Said, "Dude, act like you've been there before." Mm-hmm. You know, when I see guys like do that kind of stuff, whether it's pro and I get it. If you win worlds, like it's so emotional. Like, I get you it. Put so much time. I get it. Doesn't mean I like it though. Especially at lower levels. Well, you know what you should do? Mm. Get him a pillow. He can take it back to his car and then yell into it. <laughs> <laughs> or just in the corner at the gym. Yeah, yelling into a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he needs to do it's it. Cascade though. guys, man. <laughs> a little aggro, man. <laughs> so oh, Okay. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm sorry to so I, get you I off track. I try to act in the way that I think they should act. So I and, try to have that stoic kind of... On both outcomes. Yes, Exactly, and that's another thing because I had a big issue when I played baseball competitively mm-hmm. coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, when I started to hit 17, 18 years old, mm-hmm. I would, th- because my coaches were actually too loose, they were very kind of a Pete Carroll, which if people don't know, it's like Pete Carroll's practices are known for having music. People just come and go like as you are, like do your thing, just get the work in. Mm-hmm. It, that can work. At 17, 18, what would happen, and I didn't have a dad, right? So is I didn't have someone to reel me in. Mm. So I had, when I first got recruited by this team, I killed it my first season on their team. And then the next season came around, and I was struggling right out the gate. I would strike out, and I would throw my bat to the dugout. Like, mm. I mean, throwing fits. Oh, I hear you. I still think about that today and, mm-hmm. like, cringe in bed. It was a little cringy. When I think Memory about it. Like, oh. Yeah, and I think about, like, the other parents, it's, my mom. It reminds me of Bill Burr yelling in the shower if one of you remember something cringy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh. You're like, oh, so dumb. It's so embarrassing because you said one thing or you did one thing. And it's just in your mind forever. You're like, God, I was such why a Why can't dude. that leave? <laughs> why can't that leave? 
I'm going to hold on to that. Like it's <laughs> like, I feel it. Like I just did it. Yeah. So, okay. I'm, I'm happy that I have that experience. Cause I know how bad it feels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 30 years later or 20 yeah. years later. And, um, so I, I think about that and I know that I need to be a good example. Ex- like you're saying, mm. but there is that pressure for sure. Because I've had weak moments still mm-hmm. where I've thrown a fit in like anger or something like that. Last I checked, you're a human. Yeah. Right. You know, so I mean, yeah, it's. And we're going to fail. Yep. Even on the things yep. that we try to be most disciplined on, we're going to fail. And I think, which is why I think we're not shy about talking about taboo well, it's, topics. It's really important because that transparency, it's like we go through it too. Yeah. And, you know, no one's perfect. I mean, as a leader in the academy, you try to set a good example, but that's why I was bringing it up because it's a little more pressure. You know what's funny is, so shout out to Sean Weisenberg. He doesn't, he's not big on social media. He does not really care at all about social Mm -hmm. media, but he's probably the best Nogi grappler in the state, in the Pacific Northwest, Mm -hmm. honestly. Him and probably Nate Orchard, I would assume. Mm -hmm. And he just did ADCC trials. And he made it to the top 16 yeah. uh, at trials. Uh, he, he actually uh, beat Damian Anderson from B team, mm-hmm. which was favored to win the whole mm-hmm. division. Right. He knocked him out at the top 32. That's awesome. Which was a, if you can go back on flow and watch that match. Yeah. Holy smokes. Oh, I'm going to watch it. Thanks for <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It, it, it's a very fun one to mm-hmm. watch. Mm-hmm. Um, so I sparred with him a week ago mm-hmm. um, last weekend. Not this one, but the one before. And. I had talked to him after. Gi or Nogi? Nogi. Okay. Because um, I'm doing Nogi at this turn. Right, right. Also. Mm-hmm. Haven't competed since White Belt, but YOLO. Hello. <laughs> uh, so I, I did did some Nogi with him, and I had, I, you know, I just talked to him about stuff, and I said, man, I'm just, the Gi, I'm, even though I, I haven't put a ton of time in, I'm a little nervous, and more so only about Nogi. In the Gi, I feel like my game is good enough to kind of like, I trust it in no gi. I don't trust my gi, my game and because I don't train no gi mm-hmm. and, or I do very little. And, uh, he, he goes, well, you do fine here at open mats. I roll with you and you feel just fine. I was like, yeah, that's true. I think more so it's, I don't want to let my teammates down because I thought when you become a black belt, like, almost the pressure kind of like not is gone, but kind of tampers down or goes away a bit because when you're a colored belt, you want to compete well because you think about the next belt. If I compete well, yeah, I have that promotion. I can mm-hmm. like, Oh, mm-hmm. I'm getting ready for the next belt. Mm-hmm. Well, you're a black belt. There is no next belt. You know, not obviously technically there is, but you know what I mean? You don't have to worry about a promotion or being held back because you had a, sh- a shitty uh, tournament. And so, but when I said this, and yeah, because I'm giving you the side eye right, already. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. you're uh, skeptical hippo eyes. No, I am. So when I say this to him, and I go, yeah, I just thought like when I became a black belt, like the tournaments, like it would just the pressure would be a little less. He starts cracking up in my face, right? Full blown, <laughs> like he's my grandpa that just saw someone get kicked in the nuts. Yeah, like holy smokes, he just literally laughing, and he goes, no the opposite it is the opposite and i was like oh damn and this is we're talking like pro level grappler here but but i mean it sure the hell is the opposite you know i think i can just tell you not even from competing just in general i feel more pressure Mm. in what way in all ways am i am i helping people am i instructing people okay when i'm assisting and in, in, or when i'm taking a class like are, you saying, are you saying something am that's, i yeah, uh pocket yeah. you know um when i'm rolling with people am i giving them good enough looks as a mm-hmm. you know especially if i have like uh, some tough younger purple belts who are animals right yeah i i mean i feel it more mm-hmm. and you know i have my own struggles my own different things of you course. know with but but um i've I that expectation of myself, I think, was yeah. is all, and we've talked about this before that I think is much higher. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel like I have room for. You know, it's like when I'm, <laughs> it's like when I was going up through medical school. Oh, I'm a med student. I was supposed to, but you know, mm. when you're attending physician, you're, 
people are looking to you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Even though you may not have the all the answers. The role just reversed. Yeah, real quick. Which, I mean, as we both, mm -hmm. we've been a black belt for over a year, a little over a year now, almost a year and a half, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, we're still new black belts. For sure. And you feel it. Like, mm. there's still so much we don't know. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and, oh, there's no doubt. And that, that kind of pressure, I, I, I totally know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, in for the competition thing, it's interesting hearing his response. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, this is someone I would think like, like he's he does so many tournaments. He's gone against AJ Agazarm. Yeah, you feel like you'd have to even check him for a pulse at those tournaments. Yeah, you know especially I mean? he looks like that. Yeah. Like he's very calm looking. Mm -hmm. uh, he He's beaten... Uh, that he bought. He beat the East Coast sixty-six kilo uh, ADCC trials winner. He beat uh, a, two different podium mm -hmm. ADCC championship mm -hmm. podium guys. Like so, this guy has so many wins. Mm -hmm. And but you know, he he admits that even uh, like that doesn't it doesn't mean anything. The nerves are mm -hmm. still going to be there. Interesting. Was, yeah. And um, so yeah, he laughed at me when I said that, which was interesting. <laughs> Made me feel great. <laughs> and uh, but also validated a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I. Stop me if I if we talked about this last week, but um, Andrew brought up as well about competing locally compared mm -hmm. to nationally. Did I bring that up? You didn't, but we've talked about okay. it before. And how there's a reason why a lot of your black belts at local tournaments don't show up, mm -hmm. but they'll do IBJJF Open in Houston or some something like that because they're anonymous, right? Of course, you can go to an open. Where you pay all this money to fly and hotel. Yeah, you ain't making any money, that's for sure. Not a dime. <laughs> to have one or two guys in your division. Right. Or you could go to the Rev and have the same one or two guys, like not same guys, but one or two people. Mm -hmm. And it's just, there's no hotel. Mm -hmm. There's none of that. Mm -hmm. But they don't. It, all your local tournaments, the Black Belt divisions, are super thin. I would say this is the first Rev where... It, but there is, I want to say, like 30-plus black belts. There's a good, I noticed that as well. Yeah, and, and a there's lot. A, there's some good brackets there. Seven people in my division. Yeah, which is crazy. Um, five people in the 195 Master 3-4. Th nice. Five people in the 208-pound Master 3-4. So, like, mm -hmm. and then that's just the Master 3-4s. Right. Like the, the average man size, right, mm -hmm. 180 to... 208 um let alone all the others mm -hmm. so um but what i'm getting at is there's more nerves to compete locally mm -hmm. than nationally because if i lose to gill yeah well gill's got he he's the instructor at the base right it's the hometown thing dude yeah of course and now i gotta lose in front of the guy that has the gym down the street in front of my students. <laughs> and you start thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And you put that extra pressure on yeah, yourself, yeah. which is all BS. Of course it is. But, you know, that's why I wanted to bring some of this stuff yeah. up. And it, it's, I always think of Marcellus Wallace. You know, that's pride. That's pride. I'm effing with you. F pride. You F know? pride. Yeah. And it's like, now I guess a different context there, but like I always think about that. Like, yeah, because you don't want to take a dive. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're I'll not we're not betting on. I'll yet. do it. <laughs> um, so I don't know. It, yeah, I I I decided to do it because I know I I will get better from doing it. Just from an experience standpoint, just from another rep of getting there early, warming up, feeling the nerves. Doing the first match. And also not having what you may consider an optimal prep. Yes. So that's another. be optimal. Of course. And that's the, but regardless of, but you are recognizing this yeah. is not optimal for you. Yeah. And it's an opportunity to give myself some grace also. Because mm -hmm. we will, people like us with the, the little voice in our head, mm -hmm. we don't give ourselves grace. Well, I'll buy you a scone no matter how you do. Thank you. Because those are amazing there. Andrew sent me a video and said <laughs> if I pull this move off, he's buying me a dozen scones. Oh, I'll beat him. I have some cash set aside for scones. I'll okay. outscone that sucker. Now, keep in mind, I have to do Noki, and I missed weight last time. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> okay, let's hold off let's on the scones a little, bit, a little bit. Cause damn. So let... I have a... I know we have uh, some yeah. good questions. I have a, another brief thing I want to okay. touch on 
to let everyone know. Uh, we've always talked about, oh, how many strength training sessions should I do and what should I do to augment my jujitsu and this kind of thing, right? And if you're older, you can do less. <clears throat> I'm, And I'll let you guys know how this works, okay? But Carrie and I are starting something where we have our main gym, which is r directly above where we're sitting right now, okay? Mm -hmm. And on Sundays, we usually do, that was our thing, our full body strength mobility type of thing. But what down in our basement where our TV and all that stuff is, we have a place where I set aside a mini little gym. And so what we're going to do is very small pieces of some strength training like twice during the week. Hmm. Okay. But it came from, the idea came from Pavel Satsulin, yep. who was my kettlebell instructor. Yep. He had, he and Dan John co-wrote a book called Easy Strength. Um, I'm not saying I'm doing that program, sure. but the whole premise of it is you go in there and use strength as a skill. You don't, you don't tire yourself mm -hmm. and you get just some inputs in mm. just some reps where you walk away you're like mm, feeling good his 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 uh kind of coin thing is greasing the groove right yes and it's kind of greasing the groove is more like hey i want to get i can only do four pull-ups and i want to do 10 mm -hmm. so then every time you walk by a pull-up bar you do a couple you know you you, you basically groove those neurological pathways okay. for a specific thing what i'm talking about doing is doing a very limited set of things mainly a lot of isometric holds, a lot of kind of gymnastic stuff mm -hmm. where I'm holding positions, um, some very light sumo kettlebell deadlifts, but that eccentric isometric protocol, mm. but only like five reps. Okay. Right. And then maybe some ring rows and ring pushups done. And that might take me 10 minutes. Mm. That's it. And I don't feel tired afterwards, but Carrie and I being in our mid to late fifties, are going to start doing these little small, like little, I hate this sounds lame, but kind of strength training snacks, <laughs> oh, okay. you know? Yeah. And so on our non-training days, so for instance, like on a Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll do this, right? Um, so we're not smoking ourselves. What's the primary goal? To see if I'm going to, if I can get some strength gains out of this okay. with minimal input What's and how? How are you judging the strength gain? Like is how? I, I, yeah, very subjective. A, a well, there's feel. some weight. Yeah, kind of subjective. How I'm feeling rolling. How I'm feeling in okay. the yeah. <clears throat> but to um, especially we start losing. I feel like I need more inputs, but not as big at one time, and not yeah. as heavy of a load. Exactly on, within on the those inputs on the nervous whether system. that's intensity of hard sparring yep. or strength training right so the strength training piece we're just going to have these little like five to ten minute things yeah just to kind of get in i want to see yeah and so anyway i'm we're going to start implementing that i have the last piece of equipment coming in today i like it um it'll be interesting to hear how that goes yeah, yeah. especially how the body holds up that's the key right yeah. and so i want to see because Typically, I tried to have another workout session in like we do on Sunday, and I was crashing yeah. and burning. Just can't do it. It's mm. just too much. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. That's all. Yeah. So let's, we can move on to the well, questions. It kind of goes into, we had a question come in that says, uh, should I stop weight training or reduce intensity weight training the week leading up to a tournament? So we happen to be in, at least for the Northwest, uh, if you're competing at the Rev, this is the week of. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if this person is local but or not regardless right but that that's that's as simple as a question is should they tone down uh or stop or reduce intensity on their weight training week of yes why because we want to come in it's very much like peaking right for the longest time you look at mma you look at any sport actually sure. right you look at how you periodize your training leading up to whatever competition, right? And you should deload. And that could mean weight. That could mean intensity. Whatever your sport is, mm -hmm. you should start deloading maybe ten, 7 to 10 days before. Well, depending on what, of course, that changes depending on who you are and what's going on. Yeah. But you want to hit your peak recovery, meaning what should equate to peak performance mm -hmm. ability, mm -hmm at the day of competition. 
you don't want to be recovering still from a workout when you're competing in it optimally, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you have a regular schedule, you want to feel like a million bucks going in there, not like, man, I'm still a little sore from those deadlifts I did on Wednesday. Yeah. Or whatever, right? Even though normally that might be fine. Mm -hmm. But um, you want to get the nervous system a chance to recover. And so what I would do is active recovery, walking, um, if you like doing yoga, mm -hmm. um, some mobility stuff to keep... So would you, would you say just... Turn it off for the week. Yeah, but turn that off. But right. don't replace don't do it. nothing. Yeah. Right. You want yeah. to do some kind of active thing to, to actually enhance your recovery. I think walking's fantastic. Yeah. Just a little short hike. Yeah. Um, like I said, if you like yoga, do a little mm -hmm. of that. Still getting sweats in and stuff like that. Some mobility but, work. Yeah. yeah, just a light sweat. Yeah. Yeah, but nothing where you're taxing. Yeah. Yeah. And that will the idea then is you can peak your recovery has peaked right at that day would you say even more so doubling down on that if someone is cutting weight oh my gosh yeah because let's go back to way in the beginning of this podcast the allostatic load stress cut podcast mm -hmm. that is the contextual thing remember i said that was going to be a theme throughout the whole podcast yeah. we keep coming back to that that whole stress cut piece it doesn't matter weight cutting huge stressor yeah. Because, you know, a lot of people end up volume depleting, unfortunately. Yeah. That's how they're doing it. Um, we got our folks doing it a little differently to try to mitigate that somewhat right. of that, the stress to the system, right? Um, but yeah, absolutely. And just so people know, we have, I think, five or six athletes for this tournament doing our bread cut. Is what mm -hmm. we call it, but there's a little bit more to it than that. that. Yeah, the, which I ripped off of one of these MMA coaches. I forgot which who it was. Dolce or something. Or? One of those guys. Yeah. So um, we've successfully done it. I want to say nine or ten different um, times. Yep. As in myself, I've done I think three times, mm -hmm. and then uh, we've had other athletes. track records pretty damn good. It's phenomenal so far, honestly. When and it, people are feeling good going into it. That's too. the big part. That's why yes. we're we're not in the sauna. We're not um, doing these kind of super nervous system taxing cuts where depleting your fluid. Yeah, sweat suits and all this kind of stuff. We're not doing that. It really comes down to get rid of a lot of your the the bulk of food and yeah. fiber weight, basically. Yeah. You guys can go back and listen to we did a a podcast the on post, it. I think the post Master Worlds episode that you did, we, we talked about it pretty, yeah, uh, um, descriptive in that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we'll go over it again. Uh, but also, we've done it with females and males, yeah. different age groups as well, from forties. Uh, what's hilarious when someone first hears it, we get the side eye. They're like, yeah. "What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want me to do what? You well, know?" And we have to always say no preface and say this isn't how you lose weight this isn't how you should eat yes this is for, for this yeah. three or four days before yeah uh if someone's interested uh let me know and yep. uh, we'll we'll kind of dive into that yeah, right yeah, again yeah. especially with so many new listeners compared to the last time for sure we talked about it for sure um another question this one's a little bit lengthier that that we have here okay because there's a few questions in here um uh, a direct one and then another that's more of like a thought process kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just going to read the question because okay. he has a little bit of background on himself. Mm. It says, uh, for background, I am a Navy neurosurgeon in my late 30s, mm. currently living in San Diego. I played sports throughout high school and I did some boxing, kickboxing in the past, but was always fascinated with jiu-jitsu and started training last year during my fellowship in Rhode Island uh, in a Carlos Machado affiliated gym mm. at the time. The training was amazing, and I was able to make enough progress to get a few stripes. After moving to San Diego, I started training at one of the headquarters, and it has been nothing short of amazing. Mm -hmm. Until some, I'm, ass I'm assuming one of the Machado headquarters. Mm, Is that maybe. what he's saying? I, I assume it was just one one of the big schools. Oh, one of their headquarters. Yeah, oh, okay, like Alliance Since headquarters. He was like, oh, Autos okay, I'm with you. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure where Jean Jacques and those guys. That, are, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so he was. It, Training's been amazing until some recent setbacks. And so here is his questions. One, I recently had more than more than usual hip pain and got an MRI, which showed a labral tear. Mm -hmm. My hip feels okay, uh, except when rolling. Not really a question. Okay. But I'm with him. A labral tear in your hip. 
Yeah. So let's stop there real quick. Okay. And this guy's a neurosurgeon. By the way, for those of you who don't know, neurosurgeons go through four years of medical school. And then after medical school, depending on what your specialty is, most of us go through three, at least three years of postgraduate training, mm. depending on your specialty. Neurosurgeons, that's seven. The postgraduate yes. training. Yes. Okay. These guys and the quality of life sucks. <laughs> They've been because so, they're also not making much money, right? Uh, no, no. Right? Well, he's in the Navy, so they're doing a little, a little, a little yeah. better than a civilian resident because he's getting paid as Navy officer pay while he says it. It's but it's still not great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my point is the lack of sleep deprivation, all this. This guy's coming off the other side of that, so he's probably not your average as far as mileage. Mm -hmm. Your thirty, mm -hmm. you know, late thirties guy. Sure, he's been basically training most of his life yeah. at this point. Okay, the labral tear. And he, I'm sure he knows this, um, but that could be an incidental finding. Many of us will have undiagnosed and asymptomatic labral tears in the hip, very much like shoulders. Interesting. Okay. It depends on the nature of it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you, that is what is absolutely, I mean, because you could have hip pain and then all of a sudden you, oh, I'm going to get an MRI done. Well, because you're a neurosurgeon, you know, yeah. hip, we, you, they rely heavily on imaging. Mm -hmm. Um, but just know that, you know, for those listening, that doesn't necessarily mean that that is what caused it. You could have had that. Right. And then had maybe a soft tissue, especially around the hip mm -hmm. where you have all. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we have all these deep rotators of the hip. Very much. Hip is very much like a shoulder in that way. Mm -hmm. And it's real easy in jujitsu for you to have some kind of really deep, even ligamentous and or tendinous injuries. And then you're like, oh, I'm getting an MRI. Oh, you have a labral tear. And then all of a sudden they say, oh, well, that's what's causing it. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe, mm -hmm. but probably not, mm. if I had to guess, especially hurting with jujitsu. Yeah. Um, the, the labrum, so those of you got, that don't know, just like shoulders and hips, the basically the leg bone, the femur, and the femoral head, which is the... The so of, the, of the socket, yeah. It fits into the hip joint, right? The, yeah. the what we call the acetabulum. And that is a small surface area for that thing to kind of meet up with. It's almost like a golf ball on a tee. Mm, okay. Around that is a cartilage piece to help stabilize a little more called the labrum. Mm. Okay. And you have a labrum in your shoulder and a labrum yeah. in your hip. Um very common to have take a bunch of people athletes especially with no hip or shoulder pain do mr and he would do what's called an arthrogram which they inject contrast in there so you can see that you can't oh, really see right. the labor on a normal mri very well but and then it's very common to have asymptomatic labral tears is my mm, point I see. but anyway i just that's just for yeah. not not for him but i mean it could be yeah, yeah. but anyway so uh number two Given my personality and our gym motto of giving 100%, 100% of the time, I'm finding myself in pretty competitive roles in nogi, including in the stand-up portion, which may have led to the tear. In okay. In an environment like this, how do I train safely, but also to their standard? Okay. For Let me take it back a little bit. Yeah. So you certainly could get a labral tear from the standing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, it's uh, not knowing the mechanism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, kind of but I just wanted to kind of reiterate, given that extra yeah. history, um, for sure. So he's okay. at a gym that rolls hard. Yeah. Starts. So, man, here's the thing. So, I feel like you're heading for worse injuries, mm. um, because you're there'll be days where I don't necessarily agree with that mentality. I agree with training what we call the dog, you know, mm -hmm. when you have to get gritty and fight through things. Yeah. But jujitsu should also be playful sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we should not worry. We, it shouldn't be this death match every role. I understand why some of these HQ, you know, they have a big competition team. Yeah. But you are not a professional jujitsu player. Mm -hmm. You're a neurosurgeon. Mm -hmm. Jujitsu is awesome. And if you want to do it long term, mm -hmm. and if that's not, with the ethos of your gym, as much as I hate to say it, you should probably look around. 
Especially in Nogi, it does. And especially in freaking San Diego. There are so many opportunities and to go. Nogi specifically does mm-hmm. rely on mm-hmm. speed, athleticism. Yes. Tr- a lot more faster and more dynamic ballistic transitions. Yeah. That I'm not saying more people get hurt in Nogi. That, that's not what I'm no. trying to say. I know what you're saying, though. But, and I'm not even saying it's more taxing on the body, but it's different. <laughs> in Gi, I can slow down a college wrestler, current college wrestler athlete. I can slow down this. With grips. With grips. Yeah. And it's not as ballistic. Right. Or the spazzy 200-pound white belt. Right. But in Nogi, that spazzy 200-pound white belt. That's dangerous. It's going to be a handful. Yeah, big time. Let alone the (laughs) the college wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, we're not even wearing clothes here. We're wearing rash guards. Yeah. You know, so there's not even, you know, it's not like even street would be you know yeah. you people would have clothes on to kind of I, grip onto now the the motto the hundred percent a hundred percent of the time i would i just personally i would be interested to know if that's like like the the verbal motto that they put out there mm. or if that's kind of like that's kind of the vibe you get of like no oh, man guys go hard 100 percent of the time right there's a time for it Yes, because if it's something that that's more like the vibe that you're getting, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to follow up with it, unless you're getting reprimanded. R- right, unless you're like, dude, go, you got to go harder. You got to go yeah. harder. If that's the case, where you're getting reprimanded, and it's like, hey, you need to push harder. You need to push harder. And you know that there's times, there's roles where you you do push hard, mm-hmm. and then there's roles where you're like, you know, I'm gonna kind of. Lighten up on this one a little bit. Because what does 100% mean to you? Are you playing your C game? No. No, no, this is my point. Yeah, Yeah, so, you know, we've had these conversations too, haven't we? When you go 100%, 100% of the time, where's your skill acquisition coming? That is my point. Yeah. You're playing your A game. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. When are you going to actually do something you suck at? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's say you do something you suck at. Mm Mm-hmm. At 100% effort, you're going to do it so badly and then if your partner is going 100% on their defense... Your biomechanics are poor, you're going to get hurt. And you're going to get hurt, you're going to develop poor technique. That's right. So I, I would... I wonder if it's more of like... Yes, it's... So, for example, in our gym, we have something similar where it's like we talk about grittiness, we we talk about having that dog, if you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not 100% of the time, but on a trigger. That's right. Develop a button that if it's one of those rounds, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a a tournament, you can do it. Or if it's a self-defense situation. Yes. Which is going to be the thing that gets you out of damn near every self-defense situation, especially if you're a female or a smaller person, is when someone grabs you and you have the ability to go zero to 100. That's right. On a switch. Uh, Kyle Hiller, we've had him on the podcast a long time ago, but Mm -hmm. uh, he teaches self-defense. He's a... um, Long time sh- sheriff, or he's like been that. various defensive tactics and sort of the yeah. Marines, all that stuff. All that, yeah. And his main thing that he tells, like a lot of these uh, women's self defense, is like you need to have the ability to fight for your life to, and have the mental to hit that switch. Yes. And mm-hmm. that's going to save you a lot of time more than like I'm going to gouge your eyeballs and then grab your nuts and Could, eat them. Yeah. Because you've just given the perpetrator. A yeah. look like this is right. not someone right. I want. Right. So I, I would wonder if this 100% of the time thing is something that just kind of feels like an energy thing uh, or or if it's literally promoted out there and then you get reprimanded. Like, like Chris said, if it is that, if you're a competitor and you need that, I say yes. Yep. You, that's probably the school for you. If you're not. I'm not talking, but we're talking about a neurosurgeon. Exactly. And I mean, yeah. take neurosurgeon out of it, but you're a late, mid to late thirties hobbyist. Well, the reason the reason why I'm not taking it out of there is because a neurosurgeon, and especially with hand, he has to have the ability to do long surgeries with a lot of dexterity in his fingers. Yeah. If he has a wrist or hand injury, yeah. Oh, my wrist almost got broken on Wednesday last week because I was doing a round with a brown belt and. Shout out to Tony. And he he goes to pass my guard. And it was kind of like, it was Nogi. And it was almost kind of like a hip switch kind of thing. Oh, yep. And 
I go to turn into him, and it just so happened that my elbow got caught in between my rib and the ground, and my hand, which I'm typically quite good about, like my body Mm -hmm. locations, Mm -hmm. just in a moment's notice, yep, he happened to land on my wrist, and thank goodness that he was an experienced guy, and he felt my hand, and he was able to put his knee to the mat instead of letting his body drop like you normally would. That's right. If he was going 100%, he wouldn't have been in the state of mind to realize So we're talking about him, who's a couple stripe white belt, is probably also rolling with the same level. That are doing the same thing. They're not going to have that kind of body awareness. And he makes his living and livelihood about being able to operate with high dexterity with his hands. And other people depend on him. That's correct. And so that's what I'm trying to tell him, is if that's the vibe, no matter who you are, and now if they have a competition team, great. Yeah. But if you're a hobbyist coming in there and you just love the martial art, which yeah. we all do, um, you know, I, and that's the environment I would yeah. highly consider looking for another gym. And we have surgeons in our, our gym as well. We and, do. And they, like literally, and I am a wrist lock guy, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I love going for wrist locks on him. I will not finish a wrist lock. No. I might curl his wrist, but I'm not getting you're to You're going to gonna trap it, but you're not yes. going to. Yeah. Because I understand the there's a bigger detriment to community and mm-hmm. this guy mm-hmm. if I hurt his wrist on accident. Right. That And even a wrist lock, it's hard to get like severe damage. But if you get caught in a wrist lock, it could hurt for the next two days. Yeah. For sure. And what if this guy has four surgeries planned? I, exactly. There's craziness there. Exactly. And, and neuro, the neurosurgeons same. have um, even more very, very small moves. I mean, they're especially mm-hmm. brain surgeon mm-hmm. and doing yeah. brain surgery. I mean, that's what he's doing. Yeah. That's what he does, yeah. right? Um, probably spine too. But um, yeah, man. So with that, I, I'm not saying switch gyms, but I would say at least at first, don't be afraid to not go 100%, 100% mm-hmm. of the time. You're not going to get looked down upon. And if you do, then you do need to switch gems. For sure. Yeah. And I, I think that's enough said on that. Uh, what else does he have? Yeah, so he had his last question was, I wanted to ask advice on how to continue training with the following obstacle I face. One, he's prone to injury like the labral tear. Two, busy schedule as a neurosurgeon. Mm-hmm. Three, he has a toddler at home that limits my training, mm-hmm. my training time before 5 p.m., which there are not a lot of options. Uh, so he has a toddler at home that limits his training time Oh, before 5. Okay. His wife, who does not like the fact that I am doing such a dangerous hobby, yeah. and any time I come home with a scratch or some sort of injury, it's a long conversation. Uh, is this really worth it? Are you only thinking about yourself or the family? Uh-oh. It didn't help that I got staff that spread to my two-year-old daughter oh. requiring her to get antibiotics. <laughs> this goes into so many things we've talked about before, right? Aye, aye, aye. So You're a monster, sir. No, you are not. You found something that you love, especially with the pressure you have yeah. as a surgeon. It's really beneficial from a mental health perspective. However, comma, with that additional information, I would even say, hey, look, I'm not saying to do this, but I could foresee something going, hey, I found this other gym, not quite as aggro. They have a lot of women there. I'm wondering if his wife might want to try it with him. So, And then she sees, oh, this is cool. Maybe start with a gi. You know, and and then, you know, the cleanliness thing, the staff, the ringworm, we've had many episodes on this. Yeah. Um, make sure you wash with some type of, I like defense soap, has tea tree and, you know, eucalyptus. Or, and literally on any scuff, scratch, blemish. Folliculitis, anything. Just anything that breaks the skin. Give it a little. <laughs> yep. Especially, I, I'll do it especially when I get out of the shower for sure, because you know, pores are open and all that. And I would say, um, you know, not only with the soap, but get the little salve they make, Mm -hmm. um, defense self that works 
incredibly well. Yeah, it does. It, it, it um, really it, does. It 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 has um, it works against staff. It works against the fungal stuff too. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can also also always have that little triple antibiotic yeah. uh, salve too that you can kind of double up on. But that which those two things knock down pretty. I'm not saying I'm not saying like <laughs> if you have a hard pimple looking mm-hmm. lump with a huge red ring around it i'm not saying just rely on your own eyes and treat it with the for, triple antibiotic and for the surgeon if, no, if you have I'm a fur, no no telling general. him if yeah. you have a fur uncle yeah that's what i'm telling him. okay if you have something like that and it hurts to touch it and all that you you you're, don't rely on this triple antibiotic defense salve thing but i am saying it can it that combo will knock down the start of something yes mm-hmm. like Pretty reliably. It, but I, if you get to a certain point, like you're, you're going well, to have to get the full blown. And stuff. he knows that. He knows that about having to IND something and all that. But, yeah. um, but man, you got a lot on your you got a lot on your plate. I would, as much as you really dig that, mm-hmm. I would maybe look for something, maybe a gym. And we've said this before: the mark of a good gym is how many women are there. In my opinion, yeah, true. And say if you have a, um, you find a place that has it. Like we have a lot of husband and wife, boyfriend girlfriend that train together. Yeah, it makes things just and you know great. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. I also think with all that kind of stuff that that he just brought up, man, especially as a rec student, hobbyist, whatever you want to call it, you need something that fits your schedule. And another gym just that has a noon class, mm-hmm. a 3 p.m. or something like has that. Has some options for you. I think that's going to, that will make your home life better. Yeah. Right? And of then, course. As the things that you said, judging uh, the kind of school, just because it doesn't have the 100% all the time motto doesn't mean it's a weak school by any means. No, we have a tough ass school. I, I, yeah. And I would lean in the San Diego area, there's a place called Legion mm-hmm. that is... Is it Keenan? Yeah. yeah. Keenan Cornelius and uh, Andres Ber- Berkanovsky. Mm-hmm. Uh, great school. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of our old teammates has started going there. But they're in San Diego. And they have... Is that where Elias is going? Uh, or is I don't it, or think someone that's else? where oh, the, okay. uh, uh, Tom... Oh, uh, okay. So gotcha. They're... For example, they have competition team Mm -hmm. they have comp training they have uh pans champions and super high level and they know how to train hard but they also understand at our time of our life where we have other things going on Mm -hmm. and we have to temper those things we can still get our hard rounds in but it doesn't have to be every single time and it's acceptable you know matter of fact it's beneficial yeah, we're going to be able to come back tomorrow and train if we want. If you go 100% all the time, especially you get into the late 30s. Dude. Holy smokes. Well, not to mention, you know, in your mid-50s like myself, I I enjoy those hard rounds. But I also enjoy, hey, I'm trying a new entry. I'm yeah. trying a new thing. I'm going to work with some lower belts. We're, yeah. I'm not going to go 100%. I'm right. trying get more playful with right. it yeah and this is for anyone that's like out of gym that feels like ah, man it's like if you're feeling that pressure hard to keep up yeah well think about in a year from now how much are you going to be able to keep that this, this isn't sustainable for him yeah. and, and this is my opinion yeah because what given what he's told me what so. about if he wants to train in the gi obviously okay. his fingers have yes got to be taken they care do. of and so then since he's trained with a machado before mm-hmm. if you don't know already look up jean jacques machado his gi game and no gi game is fairly similar because he has a um, birth defect on one of his hands where he just doesn't have yeah. the fingers I think he has a pinky and, and like a, a thumb, thumb maybe right and so he developed very much not a very grip intensive gi game as far as the lapel grips and all that and i'm not saying he doesn't yeah. do that but um there are ways to do that yeah yeah and i would say you know i i don't mind doing kind of like a lobster hand style um buddy taping mm-hmm. my fingers so you're basically doing the spock symbol um for the old people i guess <laughs> yeah um and that 
really helps just reinforce. So you don't get one digit that's just kind of left out there to hang to dry. Well, that's a good point. And so I'm not a surgeon, but I am a lifelong guitar player that I play every day. And having a bad left hand injury, finger injury would be bad for me. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm not making my living doing it. But but my point is I still am very, very careful. You need those faculties to be like sharp for Mm -hmm. the thing that you still practice potentially daily sometimes. Yeah, which I love to do. So So if, because I think he had mentioned that he has some interest in in doing gi as well. Mm -hmm. Because once again, if he can only do no gi, then there's a limited schedule. Totally. Right. Um, So going into the uh, opening up your schedule to be able to do gi, I think you have the ability. Like it's, it's not one of these things where it's like, I just can't do gi. Really, the thing that's going to kind of mess with your fingers the most is going to be your sleeve grips. That's right. Not necessarily your lapel grips. No, but, more but you know, if you start playing a lot of lasso, a lot of spider sure. type of stuff. But at the same time, it's like that's where you're, you're going to be taking your nogi game into it, where you're doing overhooks and underhooks yes. a lot of the time. You can do belt grips. Those are super easy on the fingers. Yep. Uh, lapel grips. Hell, start playing lapel guard. See, well. Because that's a pistol grip. It's style. such a good point. I mean, if you look at my game right now, I'm doing lots of overhook um, mm-hmm. exactly that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Where it's not um, super grippy. Yeah. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'd come to think of it, we had a really hard round on Thursday, I think. Well, you mean when you beat the shit out of me? <laughs> I would say we had a hard round. <laughs> yeah, I had a hard round. <laughs> no, and, and there are many. That's, but, I mean, Bill Bill's super good, but um, he's getting ready for competition, and I was very fatigued coming from a, a bunch of hard rolls and I probably shouldn't have put myself out there like that. And first of all, I didn't give him a good look. And secondly, I'm trying to keep up with his pace. Um, I end up putting myself in a position where I could have gotten hurt. That's kind of where I was getting at. Yeah. 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 One, I'm getting blown out because I'm not doing, I wasn't doing back to back rounds. Yeah. I didn't want to get injured, but I, every round I did, I had like intensity to yeah. it, like com- competition, co- which is appropriate, right? This and is the time to do it because my cardio is not going to get better in the next week and a half, <laughs> no. right? Right. So I'm just like, we'll make the round count, right? And then I would take a round off, mm-hmm. and then I could do one. Yeah, and, great idea. And but just going back to this, hundred percent, hundred percent of the time, mm-hmm. we could not do that mm. and come back to train on Saturday. Nope. <laughs> you know. No. So. um no. Yeah, don't don't be even though it's a great gym, don't be afraid to look elsewhere. Yeah. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Yep. That's a great question. I really appreciate you saying and being a former Navy medical officer myself, I yeah. appreciate the work you're doing. So yeah. yeah awesome, man. Cool cool to hear that he's listening. Yeah, he's at Balboa, I'm assuming. He's down in San Diego now. Mm. It's the Naval Hospital. So uh last question. So uh he's a new fan. Uh, of the podcast, he's 43 years old. He's a 43-year-old blue belt, and, a, and he used to compete a lot after a four-year break after getting married and kids. I'm mm-hmm. just getting back into it. First question is, should I implement working out with my jiu-jitsu for strength training? I was a paramedic for 15 years and now a full-time program director slash coach at the gym that I train in. I take pride on my defense, and recently I'm trying to work on putting myself in the worst situation than working my escape or submitting from the bottom. Mm. Uh, but there's a punk, <laughs> but there's the punk slash devil inside that Bill <laughs> likes to talk about that tells me I suck, and I'm not representing my gym right by losing a round, like losing a round in the gym. My professor told me I can't expect to win every round, and I can't win every roll or round i guess my second question is am i wasting my time or should i just completely abandon ship and work on my offense when i'm working with a white belt wow okay first of all you said some great stuff you are his per- professor said some great stuff yeah i agree with that no but he did at the beginning because he's purposely putting oh. himself in some yes. bad positions okay well, you've already started in a disadvantageous position. Mm-hmm. So who cares if you win? You're working something specific, like you always say, Bill. You're right. shrinking your jujitsu down to like, hey, I want to work this. Now, 
What I did, and I've talked about this before, which can satisfy maybe both of your goals, is that a blue belt, why don't you play either, if you start standing, pull guard, or get into guard automatically at every sparring session and don't play your top game until you sweep, but then play your top game. Mm Mm-hmm. So you don't have to sit there and be like, start off and like, oh, I'm going to jump and knee cut right away, you know? So you can work them both. Uh, You can work on being dangerous and turning escapes. Uh, Gary Tonin has a whole instructional about not only his escapes, but actually turning them into an attacking position. Yeah. And that would, that's super valuable. So I don't know if that, what, what would you say to that? So I think... What he's doing by going into like these deep bad mm. spots is crucial. I do too. It's he's on the path. Yep. To being a really good black belt. Yep. Now the whole winning around, trust me, dude, I get it. I I challenge that that button every day. Every round. It it, it can be very tough. Something that helps me is I stopped thinking about the round. Now there's a place getting ready for a tournament. Mm-hmm. That's different. Mm-hmm. Keep track of score. Try to win every round. Sure. Let's take that out of, out of the equation. Stop thinking about winning the round and start thinking about winning the moment. I love that. The moment that you're in. Let's say we start standing. I love it. I'm not even saying winning the takedown. I'm saying win the grip fight. Mm -hmm. be the first person to get your grips Mm -hmm. get into your position be the first person to go for the guard pull or takedown Mm -hmm. let's say you get down to the ground you pulled guard don't think about anything except for getting into your position whatever guard you're working on Mm -hmm. i'm working on daily heva with a um, sleeve grip and a cross collar grip Mm -hmm. Stop thinking about this huge five, six, seven, whatever, however many minutes it is, and just be present in this moment. Mm-hmm. Can I play a video? You asked my permission? Yes. <laughs> I think you're going to do it anyway. Yep. What if I said no? <laughs> Definitely wouldn't matter. <laughs> so I find this to be extremely beneficial. Okay. You're going to put it up to the mic, or are you just going to... It's hard to hear. It sounds like Danaher to me. So the problem is that background stuff is obscuring what he's saying. So So, can you paraphrase what he's saying? Yeah, there's actually captions. It says, this is John Danaher. When you're defensively strong, that forms the foundation from which you become offensively strong. Okay. So your long-term goal is to be the best attacking jiu-jitsu player, right? You want to be the best attacking jiu-jitsu player. But the pathway to attack is through the confidence in your defense. So your first skill is never let people control you. you got to be able to get out of any pin, out of any submission hold, break any kind of control grip. So no one can ever impose their will upon you. When they can, can't do that, then you can impose your will upon them. Mm-hmm. Now, for people that don't know this video, he's talking to probably an eight-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hilarious yes. and so John Danaher. Yeah. He has this like eloquent, like almost philosophical answer to this long-haired eight-year-old. Instead of saying... Hey, so work you on know, your defense. Well, yeah, like I said, you know, like he probably calls that that child their first and last name too. Oh, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> Caleb McKinty. Yeah. Um, so for sure, dude, you're on the right path. Absolutely. Just mentally, you you got that little jerk in in the back of your head is is talking to you. Let that white belt think he passed your guard. Yeah. Let that white belt think he pinned you because maybe he did. Maybe you couldn't get out. Good. 
Good. The Jocko. Jocko. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Something went wrong. Good. Good. Now you know where you need to improve. If you couldn't get that white belt or that other blue belt off of you, you couldn't get out of side control. It's a problem you need to figure out. Let's figure it out. Yep. Right? So, dude, you are totally on the right path. And mm-hmm. I think you're at the perfect moment to be down this path. I love it. Which is this blue belt kind of mm-hmm. phase. That's right. That is absolutely. A lot of time we think that like white belt is we learn all of our defense. Then blue belt we can no. start putting in offense. Hell no. Blue belt, you are still refining your defense because now some of those upper belts are going to go a little bit harder on you and give you a little bit more technical response. Oh, for sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, when you have a white belt, I I would still work your defense, even on the white belts. As you start to feel that success with the white belts, you can put yourself in deep waters. But yes, practice some of your offense. Just don't make it as robust because what you're doing on the defensive side is you're putting yourself in a lot of different bad spots, different pins, submissions, and stuff like that, and you're working your defenses out. On offense, try to just hone one thing. Try to get into an arm bar every single time. Try to get into a triangle. You're not going to do a single submission unless it's a triangle, just as an example. Well, I love it. And I also, when you're playing your defense, you can start learning the, the whole um, – skill of baiting people mm, mm-hmm. into making them do something that you want them to do. Yeah. Right. Yep. And waiting for these, you know, weight, weight distribution changes, little mistake overreaching they make, which is why your professor feels like he's three or four steps ahead of you, but it's because his, he's intelligently using a specific defense, which he knows that you're going to counter in a certain way, Yep. which falls then into opens the trap. Up something that's maybe right. it's a submission, maybe it's an escape or something like or that. Sweep. You're like, how the heck did that happen? That's right. It's because there's only so many pathways typically. Mm-hmm. And he's just guiding you down a pathway. Yep. Right. So, um, well, you know, pull and close guard, getting into overhook, kind of half heartedly doing a punch choke mm-hmm. and knowing they're going to try to pull their weight on top of you to, mm-hmm. you know, and just set. The, my point is you're, you're, like, yep, here we go. And now I'm going to sweep them. Yeah. Right. And so you will you can start developing that, which is so powerful, and that strategic defense. So, yeah, I agree. Totally. Everything you said, Bill. I Thank like you. it. Say that again. Well, I this time I agreed with everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let me be clear. Um, with that, guys, that's uh, we have more questions, but we're going to cut it so we're not too long of an episode since Olivia is not here to tell us to shut up. Right. Um, with that, keep e- emailing in. Keep uh, hollering at us with some questions. Thank you for the 900 plus subscribers. Yeah. Which is freaking awesome. Awesome. Um, Other than that, we will see you guys next time. See you guys. No music. (laughs) Oh. Because, you know. Yeah. Here, let's uh, just kind of look at the camera.